to Archbishop M.C. O'Neill Catholic High School, located in Northwest Regina, Saskatchewan. Our school opened in fall of 1966 with enrollment of 250 students. Today, we have over 800 students representing our province's rich cultural heritage and diversity. In addition to traditional educational programs, O'Neill offers a French immersion program and advanced placement courses. Today, I am joined by my fellow by four of my fellow students to participate in a panel discussion for the Canadian Wildlife Federation. My name is Bert Shikoski and I'm in grade 12. I'll invite them to introduce themselves now. I'm Sierra Haynes, I'm in grade 11. I'm Colton Molder, and I'm in grade 12. I'm Brennan Kowalski, I'm in grade 11. I'm Quinta Sion and I'm also in grade 11. Today's panel discussion will be moderated by our principal, Ms. Kelly Eamon. Well, thank you for participating in this discussion, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The first question is, do you go to parks, and is there a park near you? So I'll uh, maybe start with you, Brennan. Well, yeah, I go all the time. Um, I think the closest park would be probably Venture Park. Okay, and Go that's a local recreation local park? Local recreation parks. Do you venture to provincial, regional, or national parks ever? Um, on occasion, when I have the time. Um, most frequently, Blackstrap. Okay. But I have been to Banff and Wanaskewa. And what do you like about visiting those types of parks? Uh, no, it helps me relax. I think nature has its own way of just making me feel calm. And what about you, Colton? Do you attend parks? Lots of them. Um, we make a point to go to a national park every summer. That's part of our summer vacation. Um, we always, we're always in the provincial parks, Thrones of Maine, Moose Mountain, places like that. Um, as well, we do go to local parks like West Canada and we take in all the events that happen around there. What are some of the specific activities you like to do in parks? I really like to hike and I like hiking with my dogs. We do lots of hiking there. Um, we do just sightseeing, photography, I really like photography and there's tons of things out there to take pictures of. Um, and it's just, it's nice to just kind of be connected. Usually we don't even bring our camp, but we'll just camp in a tent and it's relaxing. Excellent. Sierra, what's your involvement been traditionally in terms of visiting parks? Well, before my parents even brought me out of the country, they made a point of going to different parks. So I've been to Banff and Cypress Hills and they have zip lining there which is really fun and we go to Moose Mountain every summer because that's where my fiddle camp is for Knossi and we've gone camping around Rose Ravine and stuff and usually like my friends will invite me out too we all just have a really great time. Sierra is there anything that you found that you can't experience at some of the parks you've attended? Um sometimes like uh you can't get up close to some things you want to like I know that I've been to, what's it like, it was Kennington Manor, there's a place there, like some of the things you couldn't touch and like get close to personalized with, that was kind of sad. Or sometimes you see an animal and you know what you want to touch them, but you can't. I don't know, like there's a place in Alberta, it's a Badlands, and you want to always touch the fossils and pick them up, but they strictly tell you no touching. Which is kind of sad, even though you're going to put it right back. All right. Uh, Quinta, do you attend parks or not so much? Um, I do. There's a lot of recreational parks in the city that I go to, and occasionally I go to parks um, just in Saskatchewan and at Bishop Parks in BC for camping. Excellent. Um, is there a park that you haven't been to that you'd like to visit? Um, I definitely like to visit some more in BC because it's really beautiful out there. Excellent. Um, Brooke, do you think people should spend time outside? Why or why not? Um, yeah, I think they should because first, you know, the oxygen outside is very healthy, you know. And uh, personally, I find being outside very relaxing and just like listening because even sometimes like, I find the wind very beautiful, just in general. And I don't know. A lot of times, just going outside, you can just look at other people and you're just free from all of your problems. In terms of the rest of you, I'll just invite responses. Um, what do you think some of the advantages are of people spending time outside in addition to the ones that Brooke has outlined? I think Sarah? it probably promotes just healthy living because if you're outside, you're more likely to be active doing something. Whereas if you're inside, you're probably not going to be running on your treadmill. You're probably going to be doing some kind of paperwork, homework, being on your phone, any kind of screen, 
Whereas when you're outside, you kind of feel like this is a time to go explore and not so much be set in period. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Yeah, I feel like it's like a great tool for education being outside because like when you're stuck inside, there's only so much you can learn about where you are, where if you're outside, you're exploring, there's so many things you can see. Um, I know we, my mom runs a daycare and there's groups of kids they'll take and they'll go just to a park for a day and they'll look at things and they'll find things and make crafts out of things and they love it. They learn so much. What do you think keeps people from actually going outside? Brennan, any thoughts? Sheer laziness. <laughs> yeah, sheer <laughs> laziness. But with today's technology, everybody's feeling that with the technology so advanced that okay, I don't, I'd have, I don't have to do this because this is so much cooler. I want to play my video games. Whereas outside, well, what's over there? Oh, look, a duck. Okay, in addition to Brennan's response that he felt that uh, the reason people didn't spend time outside was because of sedentary lifestyles, technology, the lack of will, uh, can you, any of you think of any other reasons why people might be prohibited from enjoying our parks or discouraged uh, in terms of taking advantage of those opportunities? Uh, yeah, I think because of the fact that we live in Saskatchewan and we have such a cold, long winter here, I think people more prefer to be in their houses just because it's warmer and they don't feel as comfortable going outside when it's cold. They like to be in their zone where they can just be them instead of having to go outside and have all these layers like and bundle up and be like, cold. let's run to the car. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know what I mean? They can't enjoy themselves as much when it's cold. Can anybody think of any other reasons? I can think of distance because when you're thinking of a provincial park, sure it's close, but they aren't as big as like a national park. You can explore a provincial park in a few visits, you kind of know what's there. Whereas a national park, it'll keep on giving, and in a location like ours, we're really far away from the nearest national park, like it's yeah. quite a trip, and that adds to the cost of a park too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, our next question is, um, is it important to protect some areas of the world? Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Quinta. Um, of course it is. We need certain areas to remain as they are uh, for environmental reasons and just because of the beauty and just we need to leave certain things alone just because it's there and we can look back, kind of look at it as our history, like how there's trees that have been there for hundreds of years. Um, it's kind of nice to be able to see that type of history that's not uh, necessarily created by us. Do you want to add anything to that, Sierra? Yeah, I think, like, I agree with Quinta on a lot of those topics because we have so much, especially here right now with a big boom going on, there are so many houses and buildings going up and you don't really get to appreciate what was here before. So I feel like it's really important to have areas that are just left alone or maybe cared for. Even, it would be okay to care for them, I think but just have something that's natural because when I look out my window, I just see more houses and buildings. Does anybody want to add anything else, gentlemen? Not that I can think of. I very much agree with the point that it's good to have something untouched, something that you can go back to and just breathe and it's there. So, oh, Burke, go ahead. And uh, for like animals, sometimes in certain parks, there are animals there that only live in that certain part of the place, and you have to like protect them or else they're gonna go extinct. So yeah, very important. Yeah. All right. Uh, my next question is, uh, what would inspire you, or what would you say to inspire others to visit protected areas such as parks? And I'll start with uh, Colton this time. I would tell them that it's impossible to say you have traveled or explored unless you've seen what's in your own backyard, because there's so much in Canada to see that it's ridiculous when people say, there's nothing to do this summer, I'm bored. Get in a car and go. There is places to go. <laughs> do you have anything to add to that, Brennan? Nope, he said it all. He said it all, <laughs> yeah, how about the rest of you? <laughs> well, it is land of the living sky, so you should try to go actually see a sky, maybe some stars. Not just lights. City lights. City lights. <laughs>